Hello. I hope you're having a good week. What is today? Today's Thursday. I actually don't know because I've been off all week and the days all just kind of run together after a while. Um, I was going to give you a little update on the house. Um, this has not been the greatest week to take a week off work for me for a couple reasons. Um, first of all, I, I have to check my email every day because I was afraid something would come up that I need to deal with. Um, and it's, it looks like it's been a really active week. And when I go back on Monday, I'm going to have a ton of stuff to catch up on. But that, I mean, that, that would be pretty much any week. So it's not, it's not a big surprise. Um, and it, it actually makes me feel good. You know, it's kind of job security. I, I look at that and go, wow, you know, I'm, I'm going to be really busy <laughs> when I get back on Monday. So that's fine. I'm okay with that. Um, but really, it's it's not been a great week because I have all this house stuff in the back of my mind. I mean, I'm thinking about the house. And as I had said before, I have tried to just be cautiously optimistic. But after the seller came back and said they were going to fix all these things, I went a little beyond cautiously optimistic into, all right, yay, this is actually going to happen. And I went a little bit too far into that territory, which I found out. Uh, too late. <laughs> yesterday, okay, yesterday was Wednesday. Yesterday, um, I hope yesterday was Wednesday. Yeah. Yesterday, I went down to see my mom. She had cataract surgery last week. I wanted to see how she was doing. She's doing fine. Um, she had surgery on one eye last week, and she's doing great. She has to do all the eye drops and everything, which she doesn't like, but, um, so next week she's going to have the other eye done and my brother and his wife are helping her with that which is wonderful um so anyway we went down to see her and um and we were having a pretty good time and i decided while i was there it was a beautiful day absolutely perfect weather beautiful day so i thought while i'm here i'll go out and do some fishing um i've mentioned before my mom where my mom lives there's this big pond this gigantic pond behind her house it's enormous um, and I grew up fishing in that pond. I learned how to fish in that pond. My grandmother taught me when I was four, started teaching me how to fish. And I've been fishing in that pond my whole life. I'm 43. So it's almost been 40 years I've been fishing there. It's still my favorite place to fish. I've caught bigger fish elsewhere. Um, but that's still my favorite place because that's, you know, that's where I grew up going to fish my entire childhood. So I thought, well, I'll run up to um, the El Dorado Outpost in Uari, which is a... Um, a place where you can go get bait and I couldn't decide if I wanted minnows or worms that was the biggest decision I had to make yesterday do I want to go get minnows or I want to get worms because if I want to get minnows I need to take my minnow bucket this was the hardest decision I had to make before two o'clock yesterday <laughs> that was it it was wonderful um, so I, you know it's a beautiful drive up into the URI mountains to go to the place to get the bait and I'm just I'm just enjoying my day uh, my younger son is with my dad up in Virginia. He's coming back tomorrow. My older son was with me. He stayed at my mom's. He was hanging out there. So I got to go up into URI by myself, which was really great because it was just beautiful up there. You know, everything is, everything is blooming and it's just gorgeous up there right now. And, um, if I'd had a little more time, I would have taken my son and done a little hiking, but I, I kind of needed to get back and I actually ended up getting back later than I meant to, but I, I have a point. I'm getting to it. So it was a beautiful day. And I, and I was feeling good. I was feeling great. The stu the house stuff was in the back of my mind, but it wasn't really bothering me that much because, as I said, I had strayed beyond cautiously optimistic into uh, mainly just optimistic and looking forward to buying the house and moving and getting out of here, which it has been so noisy here all day today. Um, I wasn't here much yesterday, but all day today it's been noisy here. But so I get the, I decided to get, uh, I bought some night crawlers and went back to my mom's, got my uh, rod and reel and tackle box and everything out of her storage building, went out to the pond and I'm sitting out there. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. There are some Canadian geese that are nesting on the island in the middle of the pond. You know, I got to watch them and, you know, it's mainly the daddy goose will stay around the edges of the pond and the mama goose stays on the nest most of the day. She usually comes off the nest, my mom said, in the evenings, and they'll swim around together. And my mom puts a little bit of bird seed out for them on the dam, the pond dam, and they come up and eat. Um, 
so it's, it's just really cool watching these geese. Um, but anyway, I'm out there having a good time. The fish are biting. The fish, I mean, it was so great. Literally, almost every single time I cast out, I caught something. Almost every time. I only caught two bass. The rest were brim and bluegill, which is fine. I mean, but they're smaller. That's okay. You know, they're, they're, for their size, they can fight pretty well. And um, it was a beautiful day. But then, see, I had, I had my phone with me because my, I had not heard from my realtor all week. I'd been waiting all week to hear something because I had, done, I had had some estimates. I requested some estimates on the roof of the house, um, the plumbing. There was an issue with the plumbing, and I wasn't sure how that was going to pan out. Um, and I was waiting to hear back from her, and I hadn't heard anything. Well, I'm out there, had been out there fishing maybe 20 minutes having a great time and my phone I hear my phone make a noise and I know I had an email and it was from my realtor and her email ruined the rest of my day just ruined it I read the email and it turns out that the pipes in this house and we didn't know for sure until today the pipes in this house are polybutylene pipes which is bad it's really bad um, they're all gonna have to be taken out these these pipes deteriorate they just crumble um, over time you have to get them out of your house there was apparently a, there was some class action lawsuit but it's too late the window on that has closed um, polybutylene pipes in the house and they're all gonna have to be taken out and replaced and the estimate for that was five thousand dollars to replace all the pipes and so I had to answer my realtor, and, and I already told her this. I said, if they're looking at thousands of dollars of repairs, I don't have it, and I can't do it. So I had to answer her and say, you know, I'm sorry, but if the seller won't do anything about these pipes, it's I can't buy the house. I don't have an extra $5,000 to fix these pipes. It's just not going to happen. And they had said before they would not, if there was an issue, with the pipes, the seller said he would not do anything about it. Um, now, he did not say anything about the pipes being polybutylene pipes. Um, I don't know if he just didn't know or if he just decided not to say anything. I'm pretty sure he knew and he just would feign ignorance, you know, if it came up. And I think he, I think he did know. But, uh, yeah. So my realtor had to go back to his realtor to say, you know, she's not, we're not going to pay for that. And it could be a deal breaker if he's not willing to do something, you know, either drop the amount he wants for the house or something. I don't have $5,000 for pipes. So after I answered her email, I'm sitting there on the pond dam and I sit on my tackle box. I've had the same tackle box since I was 10 years old. Got it for my birthday when I was 10. I still have it. I'm sitting out there on the bank, on the dam, sitting on my tackle box, just pissed off. I'm sorry. I was really mad. I was disgusted. And then I was disgusted that the fish were biting so well because I had to keep getting up because every time I cast my line out, I caught something. I was mad about that. It didn't matter where I cast. I could cast as far out as I wanted in any direction. And I caught something literally almost every single time I cast out. So I was angry because I had to keep getting up and taking fish off the hook and rebaiting my hook and digging around in the dirt to get the night crawlers out. And then I was disgusted at myself for being mad that it was a beautiful day and, all, and the fish were biting like they have not bitten in a long time. I can't remember the last time I went fishing and had that, I had caught that many. I lost count. I have no idea how many I caught. But, it, but see, so I'm sitting there the whole time muttering to myself. There's no one out there but me. And I'm just muttering, pipes, freaking pipes. My God. You know, and I'm just, I couldn't focus on anything good anymore. The beautiful weather, the beautiful day, fish biting like crazy. I could have probably thrown an empty hook out there and caught something. They were jumping. It was great, but it was ruined. It was spoiled by freaking plastic pipes. So I stayed out there another 20 minutes or so, and then I just gave up. I said, this is stupid. You know, I'm going to... I'm going to save these worms. I'm going to give them to my aunt because my aunt lives right across the way. And I thought, I'm just going to give them to her. Let her come out here and enjoy the fishing. You know, at least she can come out here and use these and enjoy it. I cannot enjoy this. 
It's the first time I've been able to go fishing in I don't know how long, since last fall, I guess. It's the first time I've been. And I can't even enjoy it because I'm mad about the house. I'm mad about pipes under my house. In my house. Under the house. All the pipes are polybutylene pipes. They're all going to have to come out. $5,000 to fix this problem. So it kind of ruined my evening. And then today, um, my son had an orthodontist appointment at 8 o'clock this morning. I don't know what I was thinking when I scheduled that. I scheduled it about a month ago. And I was thinking, oh, spring break, no big deal, you know. Why did I have to schedule it for 8 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> so I had to get up. He had to get up bright and early, go to the orthodontist. Um, but then I, I, I said, today, I'm going to do absolutely nothing today. I'm going to be so phenomenally lazy today. And I haven't. I haven't really accomplished anything today. I listed a few things on eBay, and that's all I've done. That's it. And took my son to his orthodontist appointment. That's all I've done today. It's great. It's wonderful. I binge watched several hours of Netflix stuff. It was great. I haven't done that in a while. Um, so, and I was having a really good day again until about two o'clock this afternoon. And I got another email from my realtor. Uh, the roofers came out to check out the roof and give us an estimate on the roof. And so I get to great wonderful so I look at that I look at what they had to say about the roof um, there were some issues with it that came up on the home inspection and I was concerned just from the pictures from the home inspection I thought that looks bad um, yeah that's gonna have to be dealt with I was hoping though that it was something where you it would just be repairing the roof but no the roofers have come back and said um, it is not something that can be easily repaired um, it, the damage is so bad, and the, the roof is old. It's fairly old, and the whole roof is going to have to be replaced. And that estimate was $8,500. $8,500 now for the roof on the house. So at this point, it's almost like, why, you know, I quit. I give up. I can't do this. This is ridiculous. So I, had, I, I answered my realtor, and I said, I this just goes from bad to worse. The plumbing is a problem. Now the roof has to be replaced. And they sent pictures, you know, like we have, you know, we're saying the whole roof has to be replaced and here's why we're saying that. Look at this. And they attached a bunch of pictures and stuff. And I can see why they would say that. I mean, it, it, it looks pretty bad. There was stuff in the pictures that weren't even in the home inspection um, that the home inspection didn't point out. And I, I, I get it. I get it, you know, the, the roof is going to have to be replaced. It's not something where you can just patch it up here and there. It's the whole roof needs to be replaced for $8,500. So again, I had to go back to my realtor and say, I can't, I can't do this either. You know, I can't do the plumbing. I can't do this. I, you know, I'm not, I, I can't do it. I can't, here's my limit. The house already is right here. There's not enough room here to cover that. This little bit here is not going to cover that. So she is going to have to go back to the seller, the seller's agent, and tell them that. Um, so we did, today we did another due diligence request and agreement. And so far, the seller has agreed to repair all of the windows, uh, fix the electrical system issues um, to be re repaired by a licensed electrician, add some plates, uh, repair broken railings, repair the exterior rear door frame and uneven back steps. They can have a plumber repair the dishwasher. I don't even know there's anything wrong with the dishwasher. And resolve bathroom drain issues. I don't even know what that, I don't even remember any bathroom drain issues, but they're going to do that. The dryer hose under the house is going to be uh, replaced and they're going to replace the dryer vent. Um, okay. And then at this point they're refusing to do anything about the pipes. But the things I just mentioned, they're going to fix all that. Um, they're going to have a mold remediation company review and remedy and repair everything under the house in the crawl space that may need to be dealt with. They are going to do that. And so they would give me $1,000 towards other items in need of repair. Well, that $1,000 isn't going to go very far with the pipes and the roof. You know, you're looking at over $13,000 right there just for those two issues. 
Um, so we have done a new due diligence request and agreement, and we have asked them to uh, deal with the pipes and deal with the roof in addition to everything else. I'm pretty sure he's going to come back and tell me to go jump in a lake. But the thing is, now that he knows about these things, he's going to have to disclose these horrible things to every other person who looks at that house. Oh yeah, the pipes are going to have to come out and the roof will have to be replaced. So I don't think there will be too many people willing to pay what he's asking for it, knowing that those things are also going to have to be done. So I'm hoping he will realize that now and come down on the amount that he wants for the house. Because if he would do that, as long as I didn't have to borrow any more than I'm already having to borrow, I'm okay with it. But right now, I, I am so, I am so, the only word I know for it is I'm just disgusted. I'm just disgusted with this. I'm disappointed and disgusted and I don't, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still being positive. It's not over yet. Now our due diligence period ends at five o'clock tomorrow. So I have to decide one way or another something really soon if I want to buy this house or not. But now I'm just waiting. Mainly right now I'm just waiting to see what the seller says about the roof and the pipes. Um, and he will. we send him our estimates that we got, or the realtor sent them to his realtor to look at. And um, I was really impressed with the roofer's estimate and all the stuff that they submitted with that. It was really thorough. So they can look at all that and decide what they want to do. But right now I don't know anything. I don't know. I may not be able to buy this house. If he comes back and says, too bad, that's just tough. You can do the repairs yourself. I'm not doing it. And if you want to back out, then back out. And I may have to do that. If he comes back and says that, I'm going to have to back out because I don't have an extra $13,500 lying around for that. You know, I just don't. So we will see. And, you know, I, I try to plan ahead for things. You know, if it works out that way, if I don't get it, it's all right. It's disappointing. It's very disappointing because I really like the house. I really do. And right now, um, there's just nothing on the market. There are two neighborhoods that I'm looking to buy a house in. There are two places that I'm very interested in. And these are really the only two places I'm looking right now. And I'm not really willing to stray too far away from these two areas. And right now in those two areas, there's really nothing that I'm interested in. I mean, I, I checked realtor.com again today and there's just, there's just nothing there that I want. So, I mean, if I don't go with this house, um, I'll have to talk to the front office at the apartment about doing possibly a month to month lease because my lease here runs out June the 10th. So I may have to do a month to month, which is more expensive. I mean, I have to consider all that. You know, and I've already put quite a bit of money into this house as far as the, the money for the due diligence, uh, the home, the home inspection, what I've had to pay for the estimates. I already have quite a bit of money invested in this house. So I really hate to walk away, but at the same time, you know, it's like I don't have unlimited money here to keep paying for things, you know. So right now, <clears throat> I don't know what the seller is going to say. I don't, I don't know how they're going to feel about it. I imagine they're going to be pretty ticked off when they hear <clears throat> about the roof and the pipes. I'm pretty sure I, I would be. I would be. I'd be kind of upset, you know, if it were my house. I find it hard to believe that he didn't know about the pipes. I find that really hard to believe that he didn't know that he had polybutylene pipes in that house. The roof, okay, you know, it was a rental house. I think he had people renting it. So maybe he hasn't looked at the roof. So he could legitimately say he didn't know. I guess he could say that about the pipes. I really don't know. I don't know. But he knows now. <laughs> Thanks to me, he knows now for sure and he can't deny it. So he's going to have to disclose, disclose that to everyone else who looks at the house. If he doesn't sell it to me, he'll have to disclose the roof issue. Um, God, I don't, I'm, I'm disappointed right now. I'm, I'm just kind of down, you know, it's, it's kind of ruined this day too. I've tried to make the best of it. I've had a good day. I've been so lazy. I've done, I've done nothing today. <laughs> it's fabulous. It's been so long since I had a day where I could do, could do that. 
Yeah, we have done nothing. My son and I have done really nothing all day. It's been wonderful. Um, but now I, I, my day of doing nothing is over and I'm going to start doing some stuff. But I do, I will let you know, hopefully tomorrow I'll hear something from the seller. And when I hear something, I will let, I will let you know. Um, but at this point, unless he changes his mind about the pipes, because he said flat out up until now, there's no way he will not pay one dime towards that. He's flatly refused to do it. Um, unless he changes his tune about that, and now the, the roof is an issue as well, unless he is willing to work with me, I'm going to have to walk away from this house. And I don't want to. I don't want to. It's a great house. It's in the neighborhood I want. It has pretty much everything I want except for the garage, but I can live without that. It has everything else I want. But, you know, I have to be realistic about it. I have to be realistic. So, um, you can't buy things just based on your heart. You have to use your head, too. See, I learned that when I was 16, my first car. I worked and saved up money and bought a car, and it was really cute. It was a, a 1984 Pontiac Fiero, and it was adorable, but it was a piece of crap. It was, a, it was the worst car. It was constantly stranding me everywhere. It was terrible. It was a lemon. I spent more on repairs and towing than I did on the stupid car. So I learned a very valuable lesson from that. I learned that you can't just make purchases based on how you feel. You have to think about it and not just, you can't use your emotions to decide stuff like that. It's a bad, bad idea. Um, so yeah, I love the house, but I can't let that be the only thing that guides me through this. I, I don't want to overextend myself financially, I'm, and I'm not going to. So... As much as I would hate it, I will walk away if I have to. It's not a bluff. I really mean it. I'll walk away. And I will just keep looking and wait for something else to come along. That's really all I can do. So I'm going to try to put that out of my mind for now because there's nothing I can do until this person comes back and tells me something. I'm going to put that out of my mind. And I'm going to move on with my day and try to enjoy the remainder of my week off. And um, I'm going to make a, a video here shortly. I'm going to have Lynette uh, do something that I just popped into my mind yesterday and I thought it would be fun to do. So um, I'm going to try to work on that and get that posted a little bit later today. So um, thank you for watching. And like I said, when I find out anything at all, I will post something and let you know. <laughs>